all right, this is pretty cool, and I want to show this off. This is something that Justin has been working on. Uh, I'm not positive this is in the official release build yet, but it's in my sort of pre-release build, um, and it's okay that I show this off. I've double-checked. This is a way for you to upload metadata only to a server that Justin is running. It's a way to supply new metadata for files that somebody else might already have downloaded. So imagine you're a vendor and you decide to tackle your back catalog and you've done all this work. You really don't want to have to contact every one of your users and say, oh, look, here's your new file names. You can download a whole new set with a new metadata and all this stuff. So let's show up how this works. Um, I'm going to basically switch back to SoundMiner and I'm going to drop in there that Ether library that we worked on earlier. Okay. So I know that this has the file name and all the metadata and all the category IDs that I want. This is a compliant library. And a lot of people have bought this library, so I want to make this metadata available to them. So what I can do is I can come, and again, the important thing here is that the manufacturer has the name of the manufacturer. And whatever you decide to put here is what somebody on the other end is going to have to have in this field for it to match. So the reason behind this is you don't want to have false matches. It would be pretty rare. What, th what this is actually going to do is it's going to create a fingerprint, more or less, for every one of these audio files, and it's going to upload metadata according to that sort of fingerprint or sort of an ID. And the user could basically say, hey, I've got these files. Find the metadata that matches this fingerprint and pull it down. So the manufacturer being consistent between both sides is a sort of a safety check. It's a way to say, okay, just make sure you don't pull down some boom metadata or some recordist metadata or something like that. So... In my case, when I upload this metadata, I'm going to put in here my manufacturer name, and I'm going to put it as me. And again, it has to be the field manufacturer. So uh, everything is ready to upload, so I'm going to simply select everything, and I'm going to come down here to the hammer and wrench icon, go to the debug menu, which is where it's located for now. I don't know if it'll live here forever, but for now. And I'm going to say metadata upload. And it's going to take a few minutes. Well, not even. It's going pretty fast. It's going through and creating this fingerprint for every one of these files and uploading the associated metadata. This will live in the server and is available for other users using SoundMiner to pull it back down. Again, this is a proprietary SoundMiner thing. This isn't available in anybody else's program, but a lot of SoundMiner users are out there and this is a pretty clever way for them to basically share metadata. And a lot of vendors use SoundMiner to do the metadata in the first place. So that's it, we're done. So now what do we do with it? Well. Let's, let's have a look at something here. Okay, so now I want to remove all of this metadata. So I'm going to come here, and I have a script to do this. Um, but you could come in here and clear these out, or you could build a workflow to clear them out. But let's say I just remove everything. A little bit dangerous, but I'm, I'm confident. So we have no metadata. I've actually removed it from the files. And just to be really safe, I'm actually going to embed the files. I'm going to literally say embed these blank fields. So there's no chance that there's metadata now in here. Uh, rescan selected. It's going to go through and basically they better not come back with anything because I've cleared it all out and I've resaved it. So these things should come back with nothing, right? There's nothing there. I only have this file name. I'm going to do something a little more drastic even and say call up the workflows and I'm going to rebuild the file names to be something completely different. So let's say we field build. So let's go to field build. Well, actually, let's just say set the field file name to test and then number, append the number one to the file name in the format like this. So now I basically come through and I'm obliterating my file names, right? What I'm left with here is just a whole bunch of file names that say test01. Now, if this works, I'm going to be able to re-pull down all the metadata, not the file name because I've changed that, but we're going to pull down all the metadata needed to rebuild the file name very easily. And if I had taken the time to uh, include the file name, let's say, in the user comments field, then I could have made this even easier on myself. But let's just, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, so I'm going to come up here to database, and I'm going to say, look up metadata from cloud, and watch what happens. Absolutely nothing. And the reason is, again, I need something in the manufacturer field to sort of help link these files to the metadata that's now on the server. So I'm going to select everything, I'm going to hit edit, and I know that I have to put exactly the words Tim Nielsen here. And that's it. Now, when I go back here to database, look up metadata from cloud, it's basically going to go through and every, match every one of these files to the metadata that's on the server and pull it back down. And we see even the vendor category is coming back, the category, the designer, the library, the show, all of these things is coming back, right? 
Now, again, if I had taken the time to include the, the other file name somewhere else, for example, under the notes field or something, I could then do something simple as a copy field from one to the other. But in this case, I'm still stuck with my original file names, which isn't as useful. So now I can simply go back to the workflows, clear out what I have, go back here to UCS build, basically include this, include the vendor, creator ID, I can use designer, library for the source. Let's actually, yeah, that will work. And when I hit run now, destination for the file name, you'll see that basically it'll go back and through and it'll basically rebuild the file names back in compliance with our setup exactly as they were more or less before I uploaded that stuff. So com radio, radio high pitch thing. Again, if we scroll down, we should see the vendor category version. But you can see that basically from literally a file name that said test01, I've now pulled down all the metadata from the server and I've been able to rename the file just that quickly. And that is pretty cool.